In Jesus' name, amen. Today we hear the account of our Lord's baptism in the Jordan River. Each of the Gospels in their own way records the events of Jesus' baptism and makes reference to it. Each one kind of accenting a different part of that event. We hear it today through Mark's Gospel. The way in which Mark structures the story of Jesus' life in his Gospel is unique to Mark. You would think a person telling a person's life story would begin with a birth, but that's not the way Mark does it. The first thing he records about Jesus is his baptism. That's where things start, and we believe Jesus was probably around 30 years old or so when he was baptized by John in the River Jordan. If you read Mark's Gospel and the story of Jesus' life, there's no childhood in Nazareth, no Mary and Joseph, no shepherds, no wise men, no angels singing from heaven. He begins with Jesus' baptism as the beginning of the story of Jesus' act of saving the world. After all, that's really where it all began. And baptism is a new beginning for us, too. No matter where you were baptized, whether in a church or a hospital room, or when you were baptized, as an infant or an adult, later in life, baptism is a new beginning. We view it that way. We believe that to be true. When water is poured and words are proclaimed, we believe we hear great promises from God. And the promise is this. You are my daughter. You are my son. You are mine, God says to us, forever. In Mark's Gospel, we encounter John the Baptist doing his work in the Jordan River, baptizing anyone who would come to him to repent of their sins. And Jesus came to him. And Jesus came down to the Jordan and there was baptized, but Jesus' baptism was different. <clears throat> After he was baptized, as he was coming up out of the water, the heavens opened and the Spirit descended, the Holy Spirit, in the form of a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. That must have been quite a scene. Undoubtedly, John the Baptist knew that even with all of his own notoriety, he had met someone more important than John. This was the beginning of something brand new for these people, something they'd never seen before. Perhaps you've had the great privilege of visiting the Holy Land. You might remember if you went to the Jordan River what it was like. When we were there on a tour of the Holy Land, I was surprised by how big the parking lot is above the River Jordan. A lot of tour buses there. And then you go down to the Jordan River. It's not nearly as big as I thought perhaps it would be. It's really more like a creek or a stream. But from that huge parking lot, you can see people going down to the Jordan River. And when we were there, there were two or three different groups of Christians standing in the water some to be baptized and some to be in that water to renew their baptism. That's the way it was in Jesus' day, not with the parking lots, of course, but people streaming down to meet John the Baptist in the Jordan River and there to be baptized and to be cleansed of their sins and now in Jesus' baptism to be made God's children forever. You received a new beginning when you were baptized. And I do hope you know the date of your baptism so that you can celebrate that with all of the joy you celebrate your birthday. I was given the great privilege in my life of being baptized on my parents' wedding anniversary. So at least as a kid growing up, every time, I, every time they went out to eat, which wasn't very often, so it was a rare occasion, I knew it must be a special day. And not only was it their anniversary, it was my baptismal birthday, but however you remember it, to remember that on that day, you were claimed 
as a child of God. It's a new start for you and a new start for me because we believe in baptism we receive the forgiveness of sins, that we are redeemed from death and the devil, and that we are granted eternal salvation. Over the centuries, the church has observed baptism in a variety of ways. As a young pastor, I took our youth group to the local Y for a swimming expedition in the afternoon on a Sunday, but I was told when I made the reservation that we needed to be out of the pool by six because there was another congregation in town that was bringing people there to have their baptismal service. Some Christian traditions postpone baptism till a later age. Others of us welcome infants to the waters of holy baptism because we believe it's not so important how old you are. We believe that this is a miracle taking place, that God is the one who is doing the acting in the waters of holy baptism. I once heard about a church that was creating a new worship space and the font was put at the center of the entrance of the church and the, and the architect said he wanted to make the font big enough to die in. And so the waters were running and the font was large and it was at the entrance to the place. I was pastor once of a church next door to a Melkite Christian church and their custom was to have the baptism off in the narthex. And when a baby was brought to be baptized, everybody in the whole congregation would gather out there. And the baptism would take place. And then when the priest brought the child out of the waters of holy baptism, the priest would place this child in a baptismal robe. And this child, this infant, would lead the congregation into worship. Whatever your custom was, in those waters of baptism, you were claimed as a child of God. Sometimes we hear about baptism talked about as something that people do. There's nothing wrong with requiring us to be able to speak about our faith. In fact, we all could do that a little bit better. But we believe that in baptism, God is the main actor that God believes in us in holy baptism, believes and loves us enough to want us to be claimed as God's very own children. And not only does baptism show God's faith and love toward us, we are given a precious gift, a community of faith that surrounds us and loves us, that cares for us. If you were a child growing up in the church, my guess is you remember older members of that congregation who went out of their way to show their love toward you, who made it possible for you to be instructed in the faith, who smiled maybe when you made noise during worship or when you made that church space your very own. We're given the gift of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the ages and over every continent. These are gifts that are given to us. You may not remember the event of your baptism if you were baptized as a child or an infant, but I invite you to recall it on the anniversary and every morning when you arise. Martin Luther suggested that when the Christian gets up in the morning, it's a good habit to make the sign of the cross as a reminder that you are a baptized child of God. And as you go about the day's tasks, meet people, go to work, care for your family, teach your children, drive on the interstate, you do so as a child of God. This is a new beginning. I am forgiven. I am loved today and forever. And I hope that as Christians and congregations think about our mission to the world, we realize that our mission to the world starts with the deep desire we have to bring every person to the love of God in the waters of holy baptism. We've been given a gift, and for that gift we rejoice. And in the Savior, who is our brother, Jesus Christ, we have new life now and forever. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the end of the prayers of the faithful today, we will dedicate and pray over uh, these commitments, these financial commitments that have ma been made to the ministry of St. Mark's Lutheran Church for 2021. If you have a worship copy of the worship service in front of you, I invite you to join in the praying of that prayer at the ends of the prayers of the faithful. Let us pray. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer and seek our prayers, that God shower healing and compassion. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For students returning to studies, whether in person or online, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. We offer before you the commitments of this congregation to your work in our midst. Bless these and the ones who have made them and use these gifts for the well-being of your church and for your mission to the world. Guide your people to seek the lost, care for the suffering, serve all, and live in your love. All these things we ask in the name of the one who came to save us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, now and forever. Amen. Amen.